Step one is complete. I've passed the first of the certifications as part of my challenge that I have for myself to take all eight Palo Alto Network's new role-based certifications. And I'm really excited. I'm glad that I've made it through the first one. This was the Palo Alto Network's Certified Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what is this certification? What did I learn? And finally, is this certification right for you? The Palo Alto Network Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification is an introductory and entry-level certification intended for professionals who are just starting their career in cybersecurity. According to Palo Alto Networks, the purpose of this certification is to evaluate your foundational knowledge of networking and cybersecurity. I would think of it kind of similar to CompTIA's Security Plus certification. That's really more for entry-level professionals and the purpose of certification is to evaluate their ability to understand basic cybersecurity concepts. As all of us know, a lot of these certifications just make sure that we understand the general terminology and when to implement specific technologies. They're not very technical, and the Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification from Palo Alto Networks is no different. It's not super technical. There's nothing in there about actual implementation or understanding how to actually use Palo Alto Networks products, but it's a really good a certification to evaluate that someone at least has the base cybersecurity and networking understanding to continue to work with Palo Alto Networks product products and to continue along the path of Palo Alto Networks certification. It is a really good first step for this uh, Palo Alto Networks cybersecurity certification program and I'll talk a little bit more about the specific topics that are in the Palo Alto Networks cybersecurity apprentice certification. Each of the new Palo Alto role-based certifications has a data sheet that's associated with that certification. The data sheet will tell you which topics you can expect to be covered in that certification and specifically on the exam. Underneath each topic, it will actually give you subtopics down to pretty specific things that you should understand. And once you read that subtopic, if you have a general idea of what it is and you can explain it, then you can potentially feel somewhat ready for the exam. It's obviously going to depend on the level of the exam, but for this level, this is the more basic level. If you, if you can read those topics and you know what they are, then you should feel pretty confident. I'll walk through the six parts of the cybersecurity apprentice certification that are listed in the data sheet. The first was cybersecurity. And what I like that Palo Alto Networks did here is they really focused on threats to networks, threats to environments, specifically cybersecurity threats, of course. And so if you need, you should know things like threat tactics and techniques, different types of malware and viruses, and just, just general things like that. So that's kind of what the cybersecurity section covers. Then part two in the data sheet is basic networking. And this will really help you with the next section, but really you do need to understand some basic networking and this tests uh, does a good job of covering networking. The certification does a good job of covering networking so that people can move on to network security. The networking covers basic things like network address translation and IPs and gateways. So I would definitely look through those sections to see those sections to see what specifically is covered. But this section does a really good job of preparing you for the third section, which is network security. And now you're going to get into specific functions of firewalls and next generation firewalls, which are the core of Palo Alto Network's history and where it's really been successful as an organization. Of course, this is a platform neutral, a vendor neutral uh, test, and all the questions and topics are vendor neutral even though it's a Palo Alto Networks test. So ne this network security is actually very general network security across the industry. And it does a really, really good job of teaching you network security concepts that actually would apply to other vendors as well. The fourth section is endpoint security, which makes a lot of sense after covering network security. It would make sense to move on to endpoint security. And it covers basic topics surrounding EDR and XDR. If you don't know what those are, definitely go uh, do the learning path for the certification, go take a look at the data sheet and go study those topics. The certification data sheet then moves on to section five, which is cloud security. It covers basic things such as what different types of cloud there are, 
what different types of hosting in the cloud there are, um, what the difference between containers and virtual machines are when running in the cloud, just general things like that. Finally, the certification has security operations, and this really covers in general what a security operations center is, what happens in there, how it, how it generally works, and it does a really good job of bringing together a lot of high-level topics about the Security Operations Center and security operations in general. So these six topics are the topics of the Cybersecurity Apprentice certification. It does a really good job of covering a really wide swath of cybersecurity topics in a single certification. To be honest, I didn't really prepare at all for this exam. I've been working in the cybersecurity field for about eight years now, so I was already very familiar with all of these topics. I also already have various certifications, including CompTIA, Security Plus, and CISSP. So I was already very familiar with all of this material. I did take a glance at the data sheet, which I would definitely recommend if you're ever taking a Palo Alto certification. They used to have something called a blueprint. It looks like now they're calling it a data sheet. And basically you can go there and you can see all the different topics that are covered by that particular certification and that will be covered in that exam. And then you can see which ones you know about, which one you're pretty comfortable in and which ones you're less comfortable in. And then you can uh, go look at the ones that you're less comfortable in and try to improve your knowledge in those particular areas. So I did glance at it, I looked through, and I saw that I was very familiar with all the topics, and I didn't study further. I just went and took the exam for the certification. So how did my experience go with the exam? Well, I took the exam at Pinellas Technical College. I was visiting some customers in the Pinellas Peninsula, so it made a lot more sense for me to take it there rather than here in Jacksonville. So I went into the college, I parked at the parking lot outside, and I went and checked in. It was kind of a small, unassuming building. You actually wouldn't think that there's a testing center there, which is why they had a big poster on the outside that said Pearson View Testing Center this way. So it was pretty easy for me to find it due to that, and obviously they send you the instructions ahead of time. I went in and the check-in center was in, in one room and then you actually had to go outside to go into the testing center. So I went and checked in. I put my belongings in the locker like you have to do for a Pearson view. And I took the, uh, they had the picture taken of me with a small little webcam and I signed in and then they took me outside and in into the other room, the computer lab where I actually took the exam. So I took the exam there and the exam just took me about 30 minutes. I had 90 minutes on the exam, but most of the questions were very straightforward. So I didn't really need all of the 90 minutes to think about the exam. And I will highlight this. Obviously, I can't talk about specific questions that were on the exam, but I will tell you the general feel of the exam was that the questions were very straightforward. I've taken several Palo Alto exams in Pearson View testing centers, and oftentimes the questions are a little bit convoluted. It's kind of difficult for me to be able to be very certain that one of them is definitely correct. Sometimes multi of them, multiple of them feel correct. And I have to kind of think about what the uh, person who wrote the exam might have been looking for when they, when they were asking that question. And that helps me be able to figure out which of the two questions might be more correct. This exam wasn't like that at all. It was every single question was very straightforward. And I felt like I uh, very much knew what was the right answer. I was very certain which answer was correct and which answer the, uh, the exam examiner was looking for when they wrote the question. So that was a pleasant surprise that it was very straightforward and that made it so that it only took me 30 minutes to complete the exam. I did pass and I got this score report right away. As you can see, my eyes were closed when the picture was taken. I must have been blinking and so it looks a little weird. Um, but I did have that provisional pass. I actually had that provisional pass for about a week. And I was kind of wondering, like, why haven't I seen an actual credential here yet? If you're not familiar, Pearson View uses a system called Credly. And Credly is their system for getting your actual credential so that an employer or another organization can verify that you did indeed receive that credential, that you did indeed pass that exam. And so I was not seeing the credential in Credly. I just saw for this provisional pass and I was kind of confused. Did I, did I pass? Is something wrong? Is there something up with the forensics in my exam? That wasn't it at all. There was actually an error with my Credly account. So I got that resolved after about a week. And then I saw that <coughs> there is indeed uh, that, that credential in my account. So now it's there. 
um, and someone can see that I, I have actually received this certification. So that was my experience. Um, I passed. I'm glad I passed. It was it was a really interesting experience taking a more introductory level exam, but I'm really glad I did it. I recommend the Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification for individuals who are entry level and new to cybersecurity, and they know that they're going to continue within the Palo Alto Networks ecosystem. Maybe they're interns at Palo Alto Networks, maybe you work for a Palo Alto Networks partner, or maybe you're just a customer that's heavily invested in the Palo Alto Networks ecosystem. You have products across security operations, cloud, and network security. In that case, this certification will give you a great base to begin off of, to start from, so that you now have the basic level of cybersecurity knowledge to continue along your path within the Palo Alto Networks uh, cybersecurity uh, products and learn more about them. However, the one challenge with this certification is it's not going to be as widely recognized as more industry standard certifications such as CompTIA Security Plus. Also, it may not fit into specific uh, compliance frameworks that those certifications do. For example, my background, I was in the Air Force and in order to be a system administrator on Department of Defense Systems, I had to have something called DOD 8570. Specifically, I had to have a Information Assurance Technician Level 2 certification and in this case, Security Plus was one of those certifications, but this Palo Alto Networks Cybersecurity Apprentice does not count towards that. One thing to consider, however, about the difference between these two types of certifications is cost. This Palo Alto Networks Cybersecurity Apprentice certification, the exam costs $150, which is significantly cheaper than the CompTIA Security Plus exam cost of $404. So just something to consider if you're an individual looking to get certified or an organization looking to create a certification program and certification requirements within your organization. Regardless of what you decide, if you do decide to, for example, go the Security Plus route, the training for this certification will still be beneficial and it is available for free at beacon.paloaltonetworks.com and that provides you with several videos, several hours, uh, over 10 hours of videos actually, for this specific certification. So if you are studying for it, you can watch those videos. And also that same knowledge will help you with other entry level cybersecurity certifications, such as Security Plus. I hope this video has helped you understand whether or not this certification might be right for you, what it contains and how you might be able to prepare for it. Next, I will be taking the Cybersecurity Practitioner Certification, which is the next level of Palo Alto Network's new role-based certifications. Please join me for that video. I look forward to seeing you there and I'll see you soon.